Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. All right. Look. Look. Tell me how you really feel. Tell me how you really feel. I would ask you what's the deal. But y'all don't even got a deal. Hi, my name is Anthony. I'm Gage. I'm Josh. I'm Fina. Olivia. I'm Ken. And I'm Afia. And today we'll be talking about how performing squats will increase an athlete's performance. Specifically, we're going to be targeting football players. We're going to show you progressions of squats. We're going to start off with a basic body squat, and we're going to progress all the way into unilateral isolation for quads, hams, and glutes. Hey guys, it's Gage here. In a few seconds, I'm going to take you through a dynamic warm-up. First, I wanted to explain why it's important. It's important to do a dynamic warm-up because you don't want to go into any sort of physical activity or exercising, especially back squats, while your body's cold. Uh, this increases the risk of injury, which is not good. Um, you also won't have as good of a workout. Uh, while doing the dynamic warm-up, you want to, there's a few vital things that you need to achieve while doing it. And, First one is you want to increase the body temperature. This, this lubricates the joints and gets your body ready to go. Um, as you're doing dynamic warm up, more oxygen goes to the muscles, which means better blood flow. Um, you also want to take the joints to the full range of motion. This this ensures that if you're doing this, you warm up the tendons and all the stuff and, and get it ready to exercise without injuring yourself. All right, let's go. First exercise we have is called a hip rock back. To perform this, you put your toes together and open up your knees really wide. Uh, this increases hip mobility. It's a nice gradual exercise to start with. Next exercise is called fire hydrant. This is the same thing as um, the hip rock backs. It's focusing on opening up your hips and increasing that hip mobility. Next exercise is the downward dog to cobra. This focuses on warming up the glutes as well as the hamstrings, lower back, all muscles essential in performing the back squat. The next exercise we have is called the four part squat. Um, in dynamic warm ups, you should rehearse potential moves to come, and this is a prime example. So, here we're just practicing squats and getting ready to perform them with weight. I like to call this one the inchworm to lunge sequence. So we're gonna inchworm out, bring that leg up, open up. This works on again opening up the hip as well as stretching the hamstrings. Um, it's got a quadruped, it's got a trunk rotation in there, which also just warms up more parts of the body. Next up we have walking lunge with another rotation. Same thing. Works on the knee mobility, warming up the knee joints as well as ankle joints, hip joints, and then you have the rotation in there to work on your lower back. This is just a wide, I call it hurdle step. It's just stepping over something, opening up your hips really wide while moving. Okay, so oftentimes athletes get injuries uh, when they're running because their glutes are not working properly. So here's a, some glute activation at exercises just to get those glutes firing properly that are going to help with the athlete's stride. So here we have the bridge. Uh, the resistance band is pulling the legs in, but you're fighting the resistance and pushing your knees out. Just going to activate the abductors and glutes. Again, keeping content, constant tension with this movement, just squatting from side to side. Uh, this is just going to get the glutes fired up and get us ready for our next exercises to come. Hello, my name is Ken, and before we start performing the back squat with weights, we'll be going over techniques of performing a bodyweight squat. My subject here will face forward so you guys can have a better view. And now the dowel will be placed behind the subject's back and the head, back and butt must remain in contact. From here he's going to take a deep breath into the stomach and bend at the hips, drive through the heels and exhale and return to the starting position. And his feet are shoulder width apart and his spine is nice and neutral. Now we'll be performing the back squat with weights to get into part starting position. Retract your shoulder blades, elbows down, and keep your back tight. Stand up, walk out into starting position, shoulder width apart. And from here, take a deep breath into your stomach, engage your core, bend at the hips, 
drive through your heels and squeeze your glutes. As you can see, I'm taking a huge breath into my stomach and driving with my glutes. Okay, so this is another progression of a squat. It's just using resistance bands on the side to cause more tension at the top of the movement just to help with the athlete have a more stronger acceleration. So as you're going up, usually that's when the exercise is easiest, but this is just adding constant tension at the top. So your muscles are working isometrically uh, and just creating a more eccentric movement at the top, which is going to create more power for the athlete. So the first progression we're going to be doing is a box squat. Now this is going to be a little bit more difficult than the regular squat since the squat has that full tension in the muscle and constant tension. And here we're coming to a full stop, really relying on the concentric motion on our quads as well as our glutes for that hip drive. Um, the longer you pause at the bottom, the longer and harder the movement will be. So box squats can be re really utilized for strength as well as power. Okay, so here's an athlete performing a Bulgarian squat. Um, it's a unilateral movement, single leg, so one leg at a time. He's really emphasizing concentric movement of the quad as well. You're getting the eccentric movement, targeting the hamstrings and the opposing leg. Um, it's important you switch both legs because you want to be able to balance out both legs. You don't want one leg to be stronger than the other. This is also going to help the athlete's balance in and coordination that will play out in the field. Um, it's important to, uh, this will also translate to our next move. It will lead to more explosive movements. So also weight can be added to this movement to make it more intense. But for now we're going to stick with the wooden dowel. So here we are actually um, progressing more to an explosive movement. So we're actually going to come off from a kneeling position into a jumping position and to the, to the mini squat that we have here. This is going to act upon more of our fast um, acting muscle fibers, which is our type 2 muscle fibers. And this is really just going to rehearse more of our coordination as well as um, play onto agility on the field, right? Really handling the ball, the ball control. And, um, and by performing this knee lift during this movement, it's going to really translate on to creating a more powerful and more faster stride which is really going to be more beneficial towards the player when they're trying to outrun an opponent on the field. It's also important we uh, do foam rolling. We can, it's going to be used before or after the workout. It's important before you could just uh, stretch out our muscles as well with static stretching. Here we're using it post-workout to uh, help with DOMS and self myofascial release. So here we have the hamstrings that were being worked, just rolling out that. You can add your leg to apply some pressure to increase the, uh, the, the release of the muscle. Then we have the, here we got the quad. Um, this is a good one because this is not really stretched well and it was worked a lot when you're work focusing on lower body. And then also very important, now we're going to the calves. This is gonna help with your ankle mobility In conclusion, starting off any exercise and any workout with a dynamic warm-up is essential to produce the best results. In our video, we showed you guys a variety of movements and stretching that can be done to prep your body for the movements ahead and to warm up your muscles. It is important to correct your form before loading heavyweight squats because it will prevent you from ha having any injuries happening. Also, having a good foundation before you perform and progress your squats allows you to build strength and endurance in your lower body, which will give you the strength to increase your weight. Progressing the exercise is also important because the body adapts to the movement pattern and the load. Squats are a good exercise for athletes, specifically for football players, since it translates directly to their sports performance, as they will be training mobility, stability, agility, strength, and power. That's it for our video. We hope this helped you learn how to progress your squats properly and efficiently.